We're staying in our 04 underscore viewport .dwg file, and I'm sure you're following along with your local saved copy as well. Now you'll notice we're still in the model tab after our previous video where we looked at the viewport options available to us in the model tab itself. Now the reason I've stayed in the model tab is I want to show you a subtle difference to viewports in the layout tabs. When you're in the model tab, you'll notice at the top of the ribbon you've got your tabs home insert annotate and so on if i wanted to create model tab viewports i would go to the view tab and use the model viewports panel there like we did in the previous video i'm going to go back now to the home tab on the ribbon now if i go into something like the stair a layout you'll notice we have a new contextual tab over here on the right hand side there's our layout tab there this is very important this changed quite a while back in AutoCAD, where basically you now have layout viewports and model viewports. They are different. Layout viewports allow you to set the scale of your viewport so that you can scale views from the model into your layout tabs. So in the Stair A layout, you can see that I've got this viewport here. If I click on this viewport here, go down to the status bar, that's my 1 to 20 scaled view of the staircase. So in the Layout tab on the ribbon, in a current Layout tab, sounds a bit confusing, I know. You've got the Layout tab on the ribbon and you're in a Layout tab. So Stair A Layout tab, bottom left corner. And then at the top of the screen, click on your Layout tab on the ribbon because you've got a Layout current. So if I go to the Layout Viewports panel now, can you see we've got a very similar setup to the model viewports panel that we used previously? So you can see if I click here, I can set a rectangular, a polygonal, or an object styled viewport. And I've also got the ability there to create a named viewport. I can clip a viewport. I can also lock or unlock my viewports as well. Now that's a useful tool. If I lock my viewport, it means no one can change the scale. So this viewport here of the staircase, I select it click on the flyout menu and I lock it like so. You'll notice that as soon as I do that and click on it using the select objects like that, and then just hit escape a couple of times to cancel the command. If I select that viewport now, it's actually locked. And what that's done is it's locked the viewport so that people can't change the scale. So what I do is I select the viewport, click on lock like that. Now you'll notice it's one of those commands where I've still got to go back and select the viewport and then press enter to confirm that and that is now a locked viewport. It's very important that you remember that because then when I select that viewport, you'll look down here on the status bar and can you see selected viewports are locked? You may have noticed when I locked it previously a moment ago, there wasn't that little blue lock on the status bar. That's because I omitted to press enter. So you lock the viewport using the pull down here like so, and then you select the viewport and then you press enter. It's an important workflow. Do not miss out pressing enter, otherwise your viewport won't be locked. So how do I create a viewport in my Layout tab? Well, first of all, just jump to the Home tab quickly, go to your Layers, and just make sure that you're using your Viewports layer. Now, mine's right down at the bottom, just off of the screen there, so I'm just going to select Viewports. There you go, and you saw it flash up there before it went back into the panel on the ribbon. Make sure that, obviously, you're using your Viewports layer for your viewports. Common sense, good CAD practice. Then I'm going to go back to the Layout tab on the ribbon, I hasten to add, and I'm going to go to my Layout Viewports panel, and I'm going to select a rectangular viewport. And I'm going to use my Object Snap, so I'm going to snap to that top right corner of the existing viewport, and then I'm going to come down here to the midpoint snap there on my title block. Now you can see there's a nice little view there, an overall view, similar to the GA tab, and what we're going to do there is we're going to double-click inside the viewport and activate it, and then I'm going to come down here. Notice that's not a recognized scale. And you'll notice that you've got a 1 to 200 scale in this drawing. I've set that up for you. It's not a standard scale. It's a custom scale. So I've gone to custom and I've set it up in here. So I've gone add and created a new scale. Put in 1 to 200. Paper units 1. Drawing units 200. I've okayed it. And it's now asking for a name. So I'll just cancel that like so. But there's the 1 to 200 just there that I've set up for you. So make sure that that viewport is set to 1 to 200 by selecting it in the list, and you'll see it scales nicely and fits inside the viewport. 
then deactivate your viewport, double click outside it like so. So you've now set up what is known as a layout viewport and you've scaled it to a known scale. So that's how you work with your layout viewports in AutoCAD. Notice they are subtly different to your model viewport in your model tab when you're working in AutoCAD.